My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can. This is your statistical development areas for the month of August, September, October. August, September, October. So, the word around the campfire is that tropical cyclone development is going to be is suppressed right now in the Caribbean Sea area. This is Michael, Dr. Michael Ventris. Even though the government has not officially declared El Nino based on outdated metrics to, to measure El Nino activity, the strongest low-frequency tropical forcing is right over the central eastern Pacific, regardless what the oceans say. That atmosphere thinks it's an El Nino. You can see below on the image Ventris tweeted last weekend, the blue and purple contours show where rising motion is strongest, enhancing convection and tropical development in the, in the Pacific, while the red contours show where sinking motion is strongest, suppressing thunderstorms and tropical development in and near the Caribbean Sea. So that's what's, that's what's going on. There's that. There was also an impressive tongue of hot, dry, dust-laden air from Africa known as a Saharan air layer, which surged into the eastern Atlantic Ocean Monday. Goes east analysis of the Saharan air layer denoted by white arrows enveloping much of the eastern Atlantic basin on September 17, 2018. This sinking, suppressing air would also quash any tropical waves coming off of Africa, which are also beginning their seasonal weakening of both intensity and number uh, as the West African monsoon winds down. You know, that hot, dry, dust-laden air, I guess, suppresses vortex production. So here you go. There's that dry, dust-laden Saharan air blowing in. And, of course, on the edge of that high pressure is some, some storms and stuff blowing up. This is the remnants of Isaac which has a 10% chance of development according to NOAA. This is the Atlantic satellite from a telecast. So yeah, Isaac may very well just peter right on out. Now what I'm looking at also is that this is one of the things, because see, this is a high pressure. This, this, you can just barely tell, but that arrow is, the air is moving in this direction. And that's what I was looking for as Florence moves out, that the high pressure would come in behind it and that that movement would pick Isaac up, strengthen it, and pull it across the panhandle. So I see this upper level wind here. This is a 250 hectopascals, which is probably around 30,000 feet, something like that. And this is low pressure here. And this is low pressure here. Got a little high pressure thing going on down here. That's interesting. See those storms blowing up right there? That's like, see this movement, and then, boom. So, and this is the remnants of Florence. And supposedly this is high pressure moving in, so I don't know what to tell you. Um, anything can happen. So that's this is the thing here that made me think that Isaac was going to get was going to get picked up and pulled across. And I I don't know I I'm still I'm, I'm still looking at. It. I know that it's you know all the you know the chances are that that no that it's going to just fall apart. But I'm I'm keeping an eye on it. So you know ten percent chance over the next forty eight hours. Actually over the next five days they say ten percent chance over the next five days. But ten percent is better than zero, right? I got to tell you, journalistic integrity and all that kind of stuff, pretty much the word around the campfire from the big brains like Dr. Michael Ventris is um, not looking really conducive. But if anything was going to develop, that would be it. That would be the spot right there. But anyway, that's all I got. My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and I am literally a non-entity in the universe. But, you know, hey, a broken clock is correct twice a day if it's the right kind of clock, you know what I mean? Or once a day if it's digital. Anyway, that's all I got. My name is R. Crosby Lyles. Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And that's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you.